Hey guys, uh, back here with a game in the 15 minute pool on the Internet Chess Club. And um, we're going to see how we can do here. I lately have not been playing as well. Sometimes with these 15 minute games, I kind of play them like Blitz. So today I'm going to try to be a little more thoughtful and explain my moves, and that should help me to play better chess, hopefully. Okay. So d4, d5, knight to f3. So far, so good. Uh, one of the things I wanted to mention here, uh, here's an interesting move. Um, bishop to f5. There's a couple ways to uh, deal with this. What happens here is the this b7 pawn can become a target as well as this bishop. Uh, there's a few ways to um, handle this, and one way is to play c4 right away. And what that does, besides uh, displacing, attacking this pawn in the center, it also gives me a pathway for this queen here. So um, that is the idea. Now my opponent plays c6, and here, a couple ideas. A queen to b3 right away is a thought. Also, knight to e5 is uh, sometimes played with the queen to b, b3 to follow, uh, and sometimes I take on d5, so I just have to decide how I want to do that. Um, sometimes when the... Um, queen to b3 comes out, queen to b6 will come out, and then you have to decide whether or not you want to exchange queens on um, on b3 or on b6, and there's pros and cons to that. So we'll uh, talk about that when the time comes. Uh, let's see here. Do I want to do... I think I am going to... Um, so knight to e5, one of the ideas here is to play g4, um, but I'm not sure if I'm going to do that. What I think I'm going to do now is play um, c takes d5, and depending on how he recaptures, I might play queen to b3. If he recaptures with the queen, I will do something a little bit different. Um, I might play knight to c3. Okay, and now I can play here queen to b3. I'm going to try to play the opening a little bit faster, and this here is kind of a, well, what he's doing here, he's threatening this um, capture here, uh, which would be, of course, uh, checkmate if I were to move, if I were to take this. So there's a little bit of a trap here, and so I have to decide how to deal with that. Um, knight to c3 would increase pressure here, and then if he plays something like e6, then I have uh, something like knight to h5 or knight to e5. So knight to c3 looks good. See, the key here in the opening is uh, you want to get, you want to really prioritize that development, control of the center, and getting your king to safety. You know, our three opening principles, and I'm not as concerned about winning a pawn, unless I could do it safely uh, without giving too much concession. Um, something that I've been reminded of recently. Just uh, in the opening, you're really just setting the stage for your middle game plans. You're not trying to win right away. Unless, you know, obviously if your opponent makes a big mistake and gives you the opportunity to do so, uh, you should do it. So uh, definitely have the initiative here. I'm attacking this uh, d5 pawn, which even though he can easily defend it, uh, which he does with e6, um, it gives me a lead in development. So where to go from here? Again, um, I could put pressure on this bishop and win the two bishops, uh, but I'm not sure if I want to do that yet. The other concern I have now is developing the dark square bishop, and I'm thinking I might want to do that sooner than later because with my queen here, i uh, probably not going to be developing it um, on this diagonal, and what I'm thinking is f4 is a nice place to put it. Then I can play e3 here. Okay. And the other nice thing about his queen move, even though it threatened this checkmate here, is that now he cannot can, he cannot contest my uh, bishop with bishop to d3. So he's playing a6, looking to probably uh, protect against this type of uh, check here. 
and I'm going to play e3. And again, I still have a lot of options to attack this bishop if I want to. I uh, don't really see the need. I think e5 is a great square for my knight. Um, and right now the game's probably, I, I think I just have a developmental edge, but I don't think it's anything concrete. Um, one idea I have maybe is to maybe poke around here. Okay, so he's playing knight to d7, keeping me out of b6 here. But the problem with this move is I'm not sure what he's going to do next with that. So uh, I can just take my time here. Um, this bishop here, of course, makes it a little more difficult to um, develop my bishop unless I want to develop to e2. So one idea is to play bishop to e2 and then castle and then worry about it then. The another idea might be to uh, try to develop an imbalance right away by playing um, knight to uh, h5. If he plays bishop to g4, then I can push him back a little here and then still win those two bishops. So it might be a reason not to, uh, well, not to play um, not to castle right away. But the other idea is if I do play bishop to e2, then the knight to h5 uh, pretty much forces the two bishops. And so I might try that. Here um, we're looking at, besides the uh, material, uh, besides development, looking to future um, imbalances with minor pieces. Okay, so here this is kind of an odd move because uh, he blocks in his bishop. So his development's a little bit stunted. And now I could definitely uh, just go ahead and, well, let's see, is there anything I can do here to make his life miserable? I don't think quite yet. But always on the lookout for that. Uh, I think I can either castle or go ahead with my plan to get rid of this bishop. Kind of, let, let's see here. I think I might do that. Okay. Um, I could take this at any moment, so I'm just going to take a moment to castle. And I'm going to put a rook here on the C file. Okay, he's got his knight here. I'm not quite sure what he's doing here with that. Um, what I want to do is wait for him to castle before I take this bishop, but if he tries to play something like h6 to preserve that bishop, I'm going to go ahead and grab that. So I'm going to put my rook on c1. Which one? I think I will put this rook on c1, and then this rook could go to d1 because I might want to eventually prepare an e4 push. That's more of a long-range plan, though. Okay, so he's making me make a decision here. And, well, so if I play this, he play, if I play knight takes g6, he plays h takes g6, and then he's got this h file. However, he doesn't really have a way to attack, so that's one way to look at it. Also, he does have to think about what he's going to do with his king at some point. So um, going queenside probably is not a good idea, and then I'm going to be breaking through in the center if he keeps it there. So um, I'm liking knight takes g6. Now it kind of gives me a little more control here. He doesn't have this light square bishop to contest mine, and I can look at doing something in the center. Okay, and I will go ahead and play my rook to d1 because I want to start breaking the center open. Reason why is because he uh, it's going to hopefully force him to castle, which will make my um, play there a little, make a little more sense. Okay, what does he have here? I could play my queen here to a4, attacking this knight. And then if he tries to play something, well then I'm looking, he might be playing knight to c4. And the, let's see, does he, is there a problem with that? I'm not sure. 
I can always play I can always play my queen back if he does that. So I'm gonna play queen to a4. I'm playing a little I'm trying to play quickly here. Okay, now he moves his uh queen over there. And can I strike out with b4? Hmm. Maybe not yet. So a couple things here is that he wants to put his rook here on the c file, but he's got some issues there as well because um, then I'm playing play with b4 here. So I think I might go ahead and do that. Um, let's see here. Although he, he's looking at knight to c4, so do I want to prevent that? Another question. If I move my knight, I can threaten his... Uh, I could play, threaten bishop to c6. Um, however, I need to move my bishop first, unless I want to move my knight to b1. Does my knight have any useful purpose on b1? Well, you know what I can do here is I'm going to attack his center now. I was going to prepare it with f3, but I don't really need to. And... There we go. Uh, now I have an interesting idea. I can sacrifice a knight here and then get my bishop in here. But uh, again, maybe something I don't necessarily need to do. But maybe it'll be fun to do that. It's the other idea. Kind of opening up things. Hmm. I probably shouldn't do it. Let's play, uh... Huh. Let's see here. Let's go ahead and play queen to c2. Okay. With the pin, that's fine. I'm going to back up and play queen to... Well, I'm going to play queen to um, b1. I want to keep contact with this b2 pawn. I would love it if he takes here and I could take back with the knight. However, I'm threatening to win a pawn now. So he might be playing b4 next, in which case um, I can play here. Okay, there we go. And I'm expecting a... Oh, now he plays... Okay, now he castles. That's fine. And what I'm going to do here, I can displace his queen... Well, not really displace his queen, but capture here and then grab the c-file for myself, which I think I'm going to do with 4 minutes and 40 seconds left on my clock. Okay. Grabbing the c-file. And do I win? A, okay, so he's threatening my knight here. And I'm just going to go ahead and protect it. And the idea now, I'm threatening this discover check. And the problem he has is he has to move his queen, which he does. And then I can skewer these minor pieces, actually skewer here. So he's threatening this pawn but I can win the knight. So let me just double check that. Bishop to c7. He takes the pawn. I take the bishop. And there is no checkmate or no hanging pieces. So I'm going to win a piece here for a pawn. I believe. Okay. I'm going to take here. And then something like bishop to c6 might be next. Or another skewer, rook to uh, d1. Okay, he's threatening check here, but this knight is covering it. And I think he just blocked off his path to protect this knight. So I could go ahead and win that. I have to make sure I'm not going to get checkmated or something like that. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Now I'm running a little low on time, so I have to be careful. Um, and then after I take this knight, I can always take this bishop later, too. I wasn't 
Oh, and Black Resign. Okay, kind of a tactical finish, kind of a quick game, but uh, that's what happens in chess sometimes, and uh, it's kind of okay for me. I've been uh, having uh, not playing so great lately, so it's good to um, good to win some sometimes. But we'll take a look at this and see if there's anything I could have done to improve my play and see where uh, Black maybe could have uh, held off a little better as well. Hey guys, uh, let's take a look at a couple positions from the game. Uh, here, this is after my uh, opponent had attacked my queen on b3 with knight to a5. And here I uh, played queen to a4 to attack it. And then my opponent played um, queen to d8. So uh, there's actually a tactical shot in here. And I think I mentioned during the game that at some point I can play my bishop to c7 and fork the knight and the queen. And uh, what I could have done here uh, actually was to, but the problem was that my knight was in the way. So I actually could have sacrificed my knight to win a little material uh, with knight to d, takes uh, d5. And uh, if, of course, e takes d5, then bishop to c7 will uh, win the piece back with some change. Okay, for example, uh, well, in this case, it's kind of dangerous because of if a queen to c8, then I get the piece and a tempo because he now is under attack. His uh, queen is under attack. Uh, but if we go back just to look at that, after bishop to c7, if black were to play something like b5 to try to displace the uh, queen, of course, I can just take on a5. So let's just go back to the... Uh, the game position. And so here, knight takes d5 would have been good. So that means that queen to c8, probably not the best move. Let's go back a move. And what uh, black could have played, he could have played a couple moves. He could have played knight to c4. Or he could have played knight to c6. And basically, uh, I think uh, I have that developmental edge uh, slightly. Um, nothing real big. I think Black is still in the game if he plays that, and then I could continue on. So this is the first uh, first move, first position that we uh, could have improved our play, and also where Black could have improved uh, his play. Okay, here's another position where uh, could have played a slightly better move than what I did uh, during the game. I played Queen to B1 because I was afraid of this pin. Uh, I was afraid of uh, I wanted to take on d5 and that way isolate this pawn and make it a little bit weaker. If uh, what I was afraid of was that after uh, e takes d4, I was afraid of this, b4 attacking the pin piece. However, uh, this is where if I had a little more time, could have calculated this out. I uh, could have entered some complications with bishop takes a6 and now I'm attacking his rook. And what you'll notice here is that he cannot move his rook along the um, along the C file because all of these squares C7, C6, C5, and C4 are covered by my pieces. Um, and so, and then if he moves, he can't move to B8 because of my bishop here. So if he moves here, then I can simply play knight to B5, and then if he takes this bishop. I can play knight to c7 check, forking the king and the rook. Uh, so that would have been, let's go back to this position. So instead of queen to b1, I could have taken right away. And then uh, black cannot attack this. He would just take here. And then I could just make a move um, either queen to b1 or queen to d3, for example. Actually, queen to d3 is probably better because it's a little more active. And now he's got to defend this pawn. Okay, so if he can't, you know, we were talking earlier about him getting his knight to c, c4, but he can't do that right now. He can play a knight to f6. And then uh, I have a situation here where I can win some material after knight takes b5. And then if he were to play a takes b5, queen to b5 check, and what is he going to do here? He's going to lose some material. Uh, if he plays knight to c6, then I 
just win the knight. If, for example, he moves the king, then I will uh, decoy this queen away first by taking on c8. After queen takes c8, queen takes a5, and you can see here I'm ahead uh, by two pawns plus a, a more dominant position. So uh, some interesting tactics there. Uh, looking at the game, I think uh, positionally I played fairly well, and uh, fortunately my opponent uh, made some uh, tactical errors. Now, he's not going to always do that, of course, but uh, in this game he did, and we have to be ready for it. So. Finally, I wanted to uh, just re-emphasize a uh, point that I made during the game, and it's about uh, positional play, and in this case, it's about the battle for open files. Uh, when it comes to your rook play, uh, commanding these open files is very critical, and so my opponent here gave me the opportunity to do that because of the placement of his queen and his rook. So I just wanted to review that with you here. And I made a decision during the game to play rook takes c8 because now the queen, when the queen retakes, uh, my rook now uh, forces the queen off. And then now I have command of this d file, which we see uh, later in the game uh, is a uh, very good thing and allows me to. Um, you know, play uh, the later tactics to win the game. So uh, remember that when you're playing in your games, uh, battle for those open files uh, because uh, your rooks will thank you for it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please press the like button. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel for future updates. Uh, if you have any questions about this game, please leave a comment. And I'd love your, to hear your comments in any case. And let me know what you think. And I'll be sure to respond to them. Otherwise, I uh, hope to see you soon, and good luck with your chess.